What's up guys, it's your boy NBA Dreams. Welcome back to another video. And today, we are going to look at the time the Harlem Globetrotters beat an NBA team. As basketball fans, we all have came across the Harlem Globetrotters at least once. The Harlem Globetrotters are an exhibition basketball team that originated back in the 1920s. They are known for their entertaining comedic style of play and basketball tricks that not even some NBA players could perform. They are holders of some ridiculous World Guinness records such as furthest basketball shot made while sitting on the court and furthest shot made backwards. But as talented as they are, most of the players on the Harlem Globetrotters are not really NBA players. Their game wouldn't translate to the NBA. They focus more on entertainment and audience engagement than winning. Most of these Globetrotters played for D1 or D2 colleges but weren't good enough at the NBA. But they obviously had certain skills that few could match such as shooting, dunking or passing. So it would be fair to say that if the Globetrotters played any NBA team with NBA rules, even the Suns or Grizzlies, they would lose. But there was a moment in history when the Harlem Globetrotters actually beat an NBA team. And it wasn't any NBA team, it was the 1949 NBA champions Minneapolis Lakers. This game happened on February 19, 1948. And this game meant so much to the Globetrotters because this was during a time when segregation was very common. At that time, the NBA consisted of only white players. No black players were allowed to the NBA. So this game was an all-white team in the Lakers with an all-black team in the Globetrotters. The Globetrotters wanted to make a statement that black people belong in the NBA. The Lakers might have been an NBA championship led by George Mikan, but the Harlem Globetrotters were in a 102 game winning streak. But even with that streak, many people doubted them because they did not think that they would be able to run and shoot with their first class white team. They believed that the combination of George Mikan and Jim Pollard, who were two of their best players in the league at that time, were impossible to defeat. This game actually angered many racist people because they did not want to see blacks and white integrating on the same basketball court. But even with all the racism, 18,000 people showed up to the game, which was a record because prior to that game, the average attendance of a professional basketball game was around 9,000. The Globe Charter starting lineup featured their best players such as Reese Goose Tatum, Marquise Haynes, Irma Robinson, Wilbur King, and Lewis Presley. To start off the game, the Lakers jumped to a 9-2 lead and led 32-23 by halftime. The Globe Charters were just overpowered by the Lakers big man George Mikan. The biggest player in the Globe Charters was Tatum sitting at only 6-3 and Haynes was barely 6 feet. And Tatum was no match as Mikan dropped 18 on him in the first half and even kept him scoreless. So they had to come up with a game plan to stop Mikan and they decided to double team him for the whole second half which actually worked as Mikan only scored 6 points in the second half. They also decided to push the ball and run fast breaks every time they got the ball so they could tie out the Lakers and not let their height beat them. And that plan also worked as they tied the game in the third quarter and even led at certain moments. But it got really tough for the Globetrotters in the fourth quarter when two of their best players Tatum and Presley got fouled out. However, they did not stop the Globetrotters as the rest of the players stepped up and they found themselves tied at 59 with 90 seconds left. And since there was no shot clock back then, Globetrotters Haynes dribbled the ball out until there was a few seconds left and passed it to Irma Robinson, who would pull up from 30 feet for the game winner and it was all net. The Globetrotters won the game. Not only did they prove that they were the best team in the country, but they showed that black people belonged in the NBA. Actually, the Globetrotters would face the Lakers a year later and beat them, but then would lose to them the next six times they met up. This game helped make it easier for black players to make it to the NBA, as two years later, three former Globetrotters were drafted to the NBA and became the first black players in the NBA. But as a result of black basketball players going to the NBA, the Harlem Globetrotters became less competitive and ended up being a tour team for entertainment and comedy. So we owe the Harlem Globetrotters a lot for what they did to the game of basketball. They might not be in the NBA or even at the same level of the NBA, but they're a huge reason the NBA is where it is today. So that's it for today guys, thanks for joining in once again. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.